Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with part four, The Secret Master of the Rosy Cross from Orders of Universal Reformation by Manly P. Hall. The Secret Master of the Rosy Cross, the true identity of the mysterious person referred to as our illustrious father, CRC, is one of the deepest mysteries of the esoteric tradition in Europe. Supposed likeness of the father CRC, this portrait, which has gained some reputation, is probably a representation of Saint Jerome. According to the Fama and Confessio of the Rosicrucians, he was born in Germany in the year of our Lord, 1378, received his early education in a monastery, journeyed to the Near East when 16 years old, was initiated by Mohammedan adepts at Damkar, or possibly Damascus, returned to his own country and built the house called Sancta Spiritus, called three religious brothers from the cluster where he had spent his youth and those four together founded the Fraternity of the Rosy Cross. Later, these brothers increased their number to eight by initiating four others. Of these eight, seven were German and the other apparently English. They prepared six rules which they swore to obey. One of these rules specified that the society should remain secret for a century. Father CRC died at the age of 106 and his body was hidden in the house of the Holy Spirit in a symbolic seven-sided vault, which he himself had designed. For a long time, none of the members knew where their spiritual father was buried. In the year 1607, while alterations and repairs were being carried on in the sanctuary of the society, a small door was discovered bearing an inscription in Latin, which translated read, in 120 years, I shall come forth. When the vault was opened, it was found to be brilliantly illuminated by a mysterious lamp burning in the ceiling. Beneath an altar decorated with brass plates was found a body, presumably that of Father CRC, perfectly preserved and attired in the vestments of the order. After examining the contents of the strange room, in which was stored many rare books and manuscripts. The brothers sealed the vault again and, renewed in spirit, went their respective ways. As a result of this singular occurrence, and according to the will of Father CRC, the brothers then prepared their Fama or Manifesto, which they sent four and five languages in the nations of Europe, inviting all sincere souls longing for a reformation of human society to communicate with the Order, which would receive and consider these messages regardless of how they were sent. This is the substance of the strange story as given in the manifestos published in 1614. No earlier historian or mystic mentions Father CRC, and no subsequent writer adds anything substantial to the account. The narrative itself gives no details by which any of the circumstances can be checked. 300 years of conscientious research have failed to discover any evidence corroborating the narrative as it appears in the Fama. Certain discrepancies in the story, however, give cause for thoughtfulness. For example, it is stated that writings by Paracelsus were found in the vault where the Master of the Rosy Cross was buried. If CRC died at the age of 106, and the tomb was sealed at the time and not opened for 120 years, we come upon a historical difficulty. The vault must have been sealed in the year 1494, at which time Paracelsus was one year old, scarcely at the prime of his literary career. It is also definitely stated that the Fama was published in five languages, but only copies in German and Dutch were issued prior to the English translation of 1652. The brothers also promised that they would communicate with qualified candidates, but the hue and cry following the publication of their manifestos was due to the unbroken silence of the brothers, 
who answered no messages so far as is known, either publicly or privately. In 1616, the Chemical Marriage of Christian Rosenkreuz was published anonymously. This work is an alchemical fantasy, and the hero who wins his spurs by becoming a knight of the Golden Stone after sundry adventures in no way resembles the Father CRC of the Fama, nor does the text imply such an identity. Entirely without proof, postmodern writers have assumed that the similarity between the cryptic letters standing for the Master in the Manifesto and the name given in the Chemical Marriage of Christian Rosenkreuz is significant evidence that the initials CRC stand for Christian Rosenkreuz and that this was the true or esoteric pseudonym of the Rosicrucian adept. In reality, the allegory solution only complicated the situation. The Lutheran theologian Johann Valentin André admitted to having written the Chemical Marriage of Christian Rosenkreuz as a satire upon alchemy when he was 16 years old. Morris Margaret in his Magicians, Seers, and Mystics, presents some curious research relating to the identity of Father CRC. He says that the wise man who became the celebrated and elusive master of the Rosy Cross, under the symbolical name of Christian Rosenkreuz, was the last descendant of the German family Germanhausen, and flourished in the 13th century. The castle Germanhausen stood in the Thuringian forest on the border of Hesse. The proprietors of this castle were grim, sullen men who venerated an idol of worn stone and practiced a religion combining Christian beliefs and pagan superstitions. The castle was besieged by Landgrave Conrad of Thuringia and the whole family, which had embraced the mystical doctrines of the Albigensians, was put to death except the youngest son. The boy, only five years of age, was carried away secretly by a monk, who was an Albigensian adept from Languedoc. The lad was placed in a monastery which had already come under the influence of the Albigensians. Here he was educated and made the acquaintance of the four other brothers later to be associated with him in the founding of the Rosicrucian fraternity. Unfortunately, Margaret gives no authority or reference to support his account, implying that he derived it from oral tradition. The frater Christian Germanhausen of Margaret's account presents extraordinary difficulties to the conscientious historian. The pious brother flourished at a time when genealogical records were extremely vague. He lived in an area about which little is known, belonged to a family supposed to have been extinct in the 13th century, and was saved secretly by the intercession of an unknown, unnamed man. Such uncertainties are insuperable, especially when no hint, intimation, or vestige of such a tradition is preserved in the available works attributed to members or apologists of the fraternity. Margaret further complicates prevailing confusion by intimating that the account of Father CRC given in the Fama is a later invention by persons unacquainted with the original facts. Until some evidence acceptable to sober scholars is forthcoming, which proves that the Rosicrucians as a fraternity of that name existed prior to the 17th century or, at the earliest, the closing of the 16th century, it seems advisable to withhold judgment on this delicate subject. The internal evidence of the manifestos would indicate that the doctrines of the Brotherhood were identified with the trends of the modern world rather than that of the medieval period. The fortuitous substitution of one legend for another at this late date and the casual manner in which Magritte presents his account seems to give cause for mental reservation. 
Certainly we are entitled to some documentation or further explanations. It is impossible to escape the reasonable conviction that the fraternity's guiding spirit was a contemporary genius and not a man sleeping in a hidden tomb for 120 years. There are three early statements in print which may help to solve this curious enigma, as neither of these brief notes appear in books usually associated with Rosicrucian literature. They have come to light in connection with another field of research. As both of these references point to the same direction, they should be given a solid kind of thought. The Anatomy of Melancholy A delightful conglomeration of choice fragments of wisdom, wit, experience, and observation run through several editions between 1621 and 1660. The author signed himself Democritus Jr., and the work is now attributed to Robert Burton. 1577 to 1640, Democritus Jr., or Burton, was much indebted to a book called A Treatise of Melancholy, London, 1586, by Timothy Bright, the father of shorthand. In fact, the later Anatomy is practically a revised edition of Bright's opus. An unknown author may, therefore, be involved who published his original treatise when Burton was only nine years old. Each of the earlier editions of the anatomy differs slightly from the others, and the last revisions made during Burton's lifetime are to be found in the printings of 1651. These revisions were made after the edition of 1638. On page 75 of the Introduction of the Anatomy of Melancholy, the adept of the Rosy Cross is called the Theophrastian Master, reformer of the world and now living. This means that CRC must have been alive in the first half of the 17th century. Forward to the Confessio Fraternitas. In this edition, published in Castle by Wilhelm Wessel, 1615, with the Confessio in Latin, note that the first two lines of the text contain the familiar abcon, or Bacon acrostic, usually found in works associated with Lord Bacon's secret society. The Lutheran theologian Johann Valentin André previously mentioned, has long been accepted as the man responsible for the fama and confessio of the Rosicrucians. In the same edition of the Autonomy of Melancholy, introduction, page 62, Andre is mentioned in an extraordinary footnote thus, Jean Valentin Andre, Lord Bellorme, consider the punctuation and its inevitable implication. Lord Vellum was the proper title of the greatest philosopher of his age, Francis Bacon. Throughout the anatomy, the Rosy Cross men are regarded as a group of utopian reformers seeking to advance the cause of learning. John Wilkins, D.D., Bishop of Cheshire, was a moving spirit in the Royal Society of London. This group of scholars acknowledged itself as being patterned upon Bacon's concept and design for the ordering of human knowledge. Although the Royal Society was not incorporated until 1662, with Wilkins as its first secretary, a detailed program for such a society is to be found in the Contemporaries or Transportata among Bacon's manuscripts in the British Museum. Dr. Wilkins published a little work called Mathematical Magic on page 237 of the 1680 edition of this treatise, as part of a discussion of subterranean lamps, appears the following. Such a lamp is likewise related to be seen in the sepulchre of Francis Rosy Cross, as is more largely expressed in the confession of that fraternity. This is the only instance known in literature in which any part of the Rosicrucian adept's real name is given. Of course, Francis is Bacon's Christian name, thus it comes about that England's High Chancellor may be definitely involved in the Rosicrucian riddle. 
Mr. W.F. Wigston points out that the spirit of Rosicrucianism reveals a deep philosophical program for the renovation of religion, philosophy, science, and art. Its purposes were identical with the acknowledged aims of Francis Bacon. Either two men with precisely the same motives and an equal degree of brilliance flourished at the same time, one totally obscure or one man was responsible for the two interrelated projects. It is not my intention to force this point at this time, merely to indicate the direction in which mature thought naturally turns. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.